Most High, Very Saintly, Common Cosmic Individual, Ashiata Shiamash. And as regards that marble tablet, which has by chance survived since the time of the very saintly activities of the great Ashiata Shiamash, and is now there the principal sacred relic of the brotherhood of the initiated beings called the Brotherhood Olbagmek. I happen to see and read the contents engraved on it during this last sojourn of mine there. During my subsequent elucidations, it turned out that later on when this very saintly Ashiata Shiamash had established there the particular conditions of ordinary being existence which he had planned. Several of these tablets were, on his advice and initiative, set up in corresponding places of many of the large towns, and there were engraved upon them all kinds of sayings and counsels for corresponding existence. But when their big wars later on again began, all these tablets were also destroyed by these strange beings themselves, and only one of them, namely that one now with these brethren, somehow survived, as I've already told you, and is now the property of this brotherhood. On this still surviving marble were inscriptions concerning the sacred being impulses called faith, love, and hope namely faith love and hope faith of consciousness is freedom faith of feeling is weakness faith of body is stupidity love of consciousness evokes the same in response love of feeling evokes the opposite Love of body depends only on type and polarity. Hope of consciousness is strength. Hope of feeling is slavery. Hope of body is disease. Before continuing to tell you more about the activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash for the welfare of your favorites, I must, I think, elucidate to you a little more in detail that inner impulse which is called there by your favorites, hope, and concerning which the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash can state it, that the case is worse than with the other two. And the personal observations and investigations I later specially made regarding this said strange impulse present in them clearly showed me that in truth the factors for engendering this abnormal impulse in their presences are most maleficent for them themselves. Thanks to this abnormal hope of theirs, a very singular and most strange disease with a property of evolving arose and exists among them there even until now. A disease called there tomorrow. This strange disease, tomorrow, brought with it terrifying consequences, and particularly for those unfortunate three-brained beings who chance to learn and to become categorically convinced with the whole of their presence that they possess some very undesirable consequences for the deliverance from which they must make certain efforts and which efforts, moreover, they even know just how to make. But owing to this maleficent disease, tomorrow, they never succeed in making these required efforts. And this is just the maleficent part of all that great terrifying evil, which, owing to various causes, great and small, is concentrated in the process of the ordinary being existence of these pitiable three-brained beings. And by putting off from tomorrow till tomorrow, those unfortunate beings there who do by chance learn all about what I've mentioned are also deprived of the possibility of ever attaining anything real. This 
strange, and for your favorites, Maleficent disease tomorrow, has already become a hindrance for the beings of contemporary times. Not only because they have been totally deprived of all possibilities of removing from their presences the crystallized consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer, but it had also become a hindrance to most of them in honestly discharging at least those being obligations of theirs which have become quite indispensable in the already established conditions of ordinary being existence. Thanks to the disease tomorrow, the three-brained beings there, particularly the contemporary ones, almost always put off till later everything that needs to be done at the moment, being convinced that later they will do better and more. Owing to the said Maleficent disease tomorrow, most of those unfortunate beings there who accidentally or owing to a conscious influence from without become aware through their reason in them of their complete nullity and begin to sense it with all their separate spiritualized parts and who also chance to learn which and in what way being efforts must be made in order to become such as it is proper for three-brained beings to be. Also, by putting off from tomorrow till tomorrow, almost all arrive at the point that on one sorrowful day for themselves, there arise in them and begin to manifest those forerunners of old age called feebleness and infirmity, which are the inevitable lot of all cosmic formations, great and small, toward the end of their completed existence. Here I must without fail tell you, also, about that strange phenomena which I can stated there during my observations and studies of the almost entirely degenerated presences of those favorites of yours. Namely, I definitely can state it that in many of them, toward the end of their planetary existence, most of the consequences of the properties of that same organ which had become crystallized in their common presences begin to atrophy of their own accord, and some of them even entirely disappear, in consequence of which these beings begin to see and sense reality a little better. In such cases, a strong desire appears in the common presences of such favorites of yours to work upon themselves, to work, as they say, for the salvation of their soul. But needless to say, nothing can result from such desires of theirs just because it is already too late for them. The time given them for this purpose by great nature having already passed, and although they see and feel the necessity of actualizing the required being efforts, yet for the fulfillment of such desires of theirs they have now only ineffectual yearnings and the lawful infirmities of old age. And so, my boy, my researches and investigations concerning the further activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash for the welfare of the three-brained beings arising and existing on this planet of yours, eventually made the following clear to me. When this great and, by his reason, almost incomparable sacred individual became fully convinced that the ordinary sacred ways which exist for the purpose of self-perfection for all the three-brained beings of the universe were no longer suitable for the beings of this planet. He then, after his year of special observation and studies of their psyche, again ascended to that same mountain, Bezinyama, and during several terrestrial months, contemplatively pondered in which way he could actualize his decision, that is, to save the beings of this planet from those hereditary predispositions to the crystallizations of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer by means of those data which survived in their subconsciousness. 
for the fundamental sacred being impulse, conscience. These ponderings of his then, first of all, fully convinced him that though it were indeed possible to save them by means of the data which survived in their common presences for engendering this sacred being impulse, nevertheless, it would only be possible if the manifestations of these data which survived in their subconsciousness were to participate without fail in the functioning of that consciousness of theirs under the direction of which their daily waking existence flows. And furthermore, if this being impulse were to be manifested over a long period through every aspect of this consciousness of theirs,